Hello. Oh my God, what a day. I look like shit. And <laughs> let me tell you why I look like shit because I've been bawling my eyes out. Because I just watched back my video that I did on Peterisms. If you guys haven't watched it, it's called something like, um, it's time to say goodbye. I, have to, I just went and picked up my epilepsy medicine, so I'm gonna put it in my pill case. I don't talk about my epilepsy on here very much because I just don't feel like, um, here, I can show it to you without, um, <coughs> so I take 1500 milligrams of Depakote a day. Um, I take 500 in the morning and a thousand at night for the rest of my life. I've been on it since I was 20, I think I had my first seizure when I was 27. And I have juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. Which just means that the juvenile part of it is that they're like small clusters of seizures instead of like having um, a major seizure. And then I was gonna show you guys, I did a little bit of a haul at Costco, so I thought I would just show you. Well, these cookies that nobody needs, these cream brulee cookies. But, okay, and these are the um, greenies that I've been using for pee, pee Alex prefers cheese for his medicine, but I like these pill pockets and they're just not. But he, he like eats around it, I don't know how he does it. Amazon um, contacted me about like setting up a store, it's like an affiliate store, and it's where I like link all the products that I use on there, and I think I make something like, <laughs> a tenth of a third per third cent off of it. I don't know, something ridiculous. It's not like I make any money on there, but I was thinking about it for you guys because a lot of people always ask me like what products I use and all this kind of stuff. Would that be something that would be interesting for you? I mean, literally, I'm being 100% honest, okay? I mean, you guys would have to like literally buy out the store for me to make even like a little bit off of it. So this is totally not for me, okay? Because the other thing is, it's a lot easier for me not to link those things and just to prove it to you for those out there like guru gossip people that, you know, they love to say what they have to say. Um, I used to link all of the books that I talked about on, um, what do you call it, on my booktube channel because I think like something, um, I had like some affiliate link code with book, like with Amazon and I used to link all the books on there. And if you actually go to some of my older hauls, like from the summer, you'll see it's linked underneath there and it says on there, if you purchase a book from this length, I make a little bit of money off of it. I'm completely transparent on it. So, um, cause you have to be, that's what you're supposed to do if you have a channel, just so you know, if you don't know that, you have to link the affiliate, you have to explain um, that it's affiliate link and that you're making money. You cannot just put an affiliate link. So anyway, but I, I don't really care about the money, but if you guys would be interested in like having all in one place, like the products that I buy for my dogs on a regular basis or whatever I use, I can do that. Um, I mean like my favorite kinds of wheat thins. I just got these sweet and spicy Chipotle. Y'all wanna see what I'm gonna have for dinner before I show you everything, okay. My dinner tonight is like totally pathetic. I need a bottle, we'll have half drink bottle of water in the fridge already. And then I got Laughing Cow Creamy Swiss Light Cheese, which I love. And I'm gonna have it with Wheat Thins. And then I got this Lemon Capellini Salad. It's like angel hair pasta and like lemon uh, balsamic vinaigrette. Somebody just texted me, so. Hold on, let me look and see who it is. My friend Lori from the casino want to know if I'm going tonight. So anyway, um, I got a humidifier and it was 30 bucks. It was on sale. It was like $49.99. I'll tell you why I got it. Okay, we have a humidifier upstairs, but it's so old. And I'm always looking for like smells and stuff. My cousin like uses these aromatherapy things and she bought us that a couple years ago and it works really, really well. I don't even know if I still have Oh, here it is. She bought us this, do you see this aromatherapy blend? Energizing. It's really nice, it makes you feel like you're in a, it smells like a spa, right? 
But I wanted a humidifier because our old humidifier had broken. And so, um, it's not broken, but it just like it needs a new filter or something. It's so old. But I saw these things when I was at Meyer, and they're from a brand called Crane. Have you guys heard of them? And they're humidifier liquids. Aromatherapy blend for humidifier. Soothing. Eucalyptus, eucalyptus peppermint, and lemon. Add to any humidifier for a wave of relief. And I got that one, and then I got this one, Zone In, Not Out. This one's called a wave. The first one's called a wave of relief. It was $7.99 on sale. The second one is called Focus, Zone In, Not Out. And this one is Rosemary, Lavender, and Lemon. Should we open them and see what they look like inside? I thought it would be three separate bottles, but no, it's like one. See? Very cool. I'll tell you. I'll give you, like, the truth here, which one I would buy. Oh, my God. These, they don't want to open. Okay, so the Focus... Center target clarity and engage. Smells like a mixture of rubbing alcohol <laughs> and lavender. Okay, and then, um, so I don't know that I'm gonna love that one. Don't love it so much. Okay. And then soothing, a wave of relief. will probably just smell like eucalyptus on it. These bottles are kind of pretty, though, for $7.99. I mean, we're trying to do, like, the fake bamboo. I almost bought the bamboo humidifier, but it was, like, $69. I was like, ain't nobody got time for that. Okay. Oh, no, it smells really good. It smells like um, nail polish remover. <laughs> no, it smells like nail polish remover. I can smell, like, the peppermint and the lemon in it. It doesn't smell like eucalyptus at all. But this would definitely be the one that I would go with. The soothing wave of relief if you're going to buy one. I mean, I guess it depends on what you like, right? And then, because Alex and I keep on not knowing who gave PP his medicine this morning. Like, he texted me and he was like, I gave PP his medicine this morning. So, you... Um, I will, he, said, I, he said, I'll give it to him tonight, too. So, I was like, okay. So, anyway, um, I talked to the vet today. And the vet is wanting to, so I take a leave for my migraines. People always ask me. I have a migraine disorder associated with my epilepsy, and people ask me what I take. And I take a leave. Like, right now, I have a migraine, okay? But I would say my migraine right now on a scale of 1 to 10 is probably a 2. And so I don't take anything for it. I only take it if I absolutely have to. Um, but my two migraine is probably what you guys would consider like a nine. I mean, like an eight maybe and a nine. I mean, I have them on such a daily basis. Here's my old bottle that I'm throwing away. But anyway, so I bought this medicine thing for pee pee. So we can, we'll know, so like, oh my God, who is calling me? Oh my God. Hello, how are you? Hi, sweetie. What are you doing? I'm live. I'm on my vlog right now. So hi to everybody, Tanya Jean. Hey! Oh, I miss you. I miss you, too. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to say goodbye to them real quick, and then I'll um, talk to you. Hold on. I will be back later. Hello. Oh, my God, you guys. I am getting such a late start on this video. It is, like, almost 4 o'clock in the morning. I have been... So, I try not to overlap my channels. Like, I try not to talk about, like, my drama channel on this channel. But I know a lot of you watch my drama channel. And since I've made the videos the last couple days about John Cook Ian, I have been just bombarded with the most amazing, supportive, and loving Snapchats, Instagram messages tweets, emails, and you guys, I am so far behind on all of it. And so I sat down tonight and I responded to like every Twitter message I had. I think I had something like, it was ridiculous, you guys. It was like over 150 messages. And then I went through Instagram and it was the same. And, um, cause you know, I like to like respond to everybody. Um, and, uh, so I went through and I answered all of my Instagram messages and then I just started doing Snapchat and I was like, I have been doing this for three hours. <laughs> I was like, I need to take a break. So, um, I was going to listen to my audiobook, and then, um, Katie, <laughs> I don't know if you guys know Miss fucking wonderful Katie. 
So Katie has shared on her channel before, so I can share this, that she was a patient of mine in the past. She And she talks about it in this newest video. But she made a video called Peter Mon Exposed, and she felt like she needed to defend me against all this stuff that was being said. And so I watched that video, and it was so nice. I called her up afterwards, and I said, girl, listen, thank you so much for my video. Now, I don't care for the nicknames that you used for John Cookie in the video. <laughs> But it is what it is, you know, and uh, so anyway, if you guys would like to see that video, Katie, Miss Fucking Wonderful, uh, put out a video about me called Peter Mon Exposed. It's very, ni it's very nice, and she talks about how she knows me, and I was her counselor in treatment, and uh, she talks about, I, it's just, it really warmed my heart. I just, it, she calls him a nickname that I wish she hadn't called him. I just, I don't, you guys, like, I'm just not... <laughs> It's one thing for me to read somebody and put them in their place. It's another thing to come up with hurtful names, and I'm not about that. And she was like, Peter, you know how I am, and you know... I said, Katie, I said, I understand how you are, and I'm supportive of you, but sometimes we need to pull it in a little bit. You know, we need to rein it in a little bit. She was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> I was like, girl, I'm not your counselor anymore. We're just friends. She's like, ah. Oh. I said, I'm just saying, you know, you don't always have to go and go for the jugular and call people. It was very nice. It was very supportive. Thank you. But, like, Katie's, like, you know, one of those ride or dies. Like, and I have so many people in my life that are just, like, I mean, in the last three days. So, I was talking to Katie about this afterwards. And uh, because it's late, I probably won't vlog forever, you guys. And I'm sorry, this will be really short tonight. But, um... It's meaningful what I'm going to say, but I will, starting tomorrow, De December 1st, I will get back to longer vlogs. But I said to her, you know, she said, your channel's really grown the last couple days. And I said, yeah, it's crazy. I've gotten a lot of subs, you know, for making these videos. And I said, but you know what? I said, the thing is, is this never would have, this never would have been possible a year ago. And she said, I know she's like, because everybody believes John and, and I said, you know, no, it's not about that. I said, it is. And I said, and I'm not the person that I was a year ago. And, and then you guys, this is total, this is the conversation. She can, I swear, she can make a video and say, I said this, she can comment below. This is the absolute truth of what I said to her. I said, you know, here's the thing. Is I said, there was a point when like, if you make YouTube videos, it's hard because you get discouraged, right? And you're like, I'm not getting any subs and I'm not growing. And around this time last year, if you guys remember, okay, my aunt was dying. Um, John Cookian and all those drama channels were coming for me. I almost left YouTube. The, and then on top of that, my channel was not growing. I was I was losing like 50 subscribers a day. I was literally from like November 1st through the beginning of the year, middle of the year, middle of January, all in red, just constantly. And um, I was stressed. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know. And the thing was, is I think I was confusing a lot of people about what that channel was. And, you know, it's hard when you start making videos because you want people to watch them. You want your channel to grow. I mean, like, I even have, like, booktubers that contact me. And they'll be like, you know, what do I need to do to make my channel grow? And I always say the same thing to everybody. I'm like, stop worrying about it. And only do it because you love it. You know, like, I hear all of these big YouTubers that are like, I'm just not interested in doing videos. Then don't do videos anymore. I do it because I love it. I'm so passionate about it. But here's the thing. I had to go through what I went through last year in December. I had to have all of these people come for me. I had to make sure that this was really what I wanted to do in my heart and soul. No matter what I had to lose, you know? And then on top of that, I had to realize... And I used to say this. Do you guys remember that even if I'm making videos for only five people, then fuck it. I'm going to make it for only those five people. And I got to the point where the growth didn't matter to me, okay? That the people that were watching my videos, the same people that, you know, Trucker and uh, 
you know, Autumn and Ola and, you know, Tony and, you know, Tia and Mama Beth and all these people that would, uh, you guys, Jennifer, I'm like forgetting so many people and I'm so sorry, you guys. But just like, I mean, there's so many names, Missy and uh, uh, there's so many names that just come up on like, you know, I, I, I read literally every comment I get on every video, but you guys, for me to respond to it, I just couldn't do it. I apologize. And I know every single, I mean, I know you guys out there, okay? Tabitha and, you know, all of the people out there that, you know, constantly, you know, um, oh, what's his name? Damn it. You know who you are from Finland. Um, why can't I remember your name? So anyway, so many people on a regular, they, like, there truly is a wolf pack. And the wolf pack isn't me. It's not like I'm leading it. It's all of us together in this common philosophy that we have of remaining teachable, of putting positivity out there in the world, and listen, and setting boundaries and teaching other people, okay, from our own experiences. Never saying that we know everything. Never saying that we're always right. But being open to criticism and remaining teachable. And that's so important and that has so been proved the last couple days to me in this whole stupid cosmetics thing. Because if you would just remain teachable, none of this would have ever happened, you know? And it's so sad when I see that happen to somebody that has such a, you know, such a fortunate situation and they basically just throw it away, you know? And um, so I said to Katie on the phone, I said, it has nothing to do with that. It said, it has to do with the fact that when I stopped caring about... I mean, this is my favorite channel. I'm hoping that Peterisms will become one of my favorite channels because, well, one of my favorite. I love all of them for different reasons, but because I love, I just want to tell my life on there, you know, stories. But this is where I really connect with you guys. Like, I really do feel like I'm talking to you guys out there, you know, like, and um, Anita, and I'm like thinking of all these people. I feel so bad because like, there's so many people that comment on my videos on a regular basis that I'm like, I've, I'm forgetting, and so I apologize, but. So many people recently have said, like, I just, like, watch, like, ten of your vlogs back to back. I'm like, oh, my God, you poor thing. But anyway, um, the thing is, is that it's, like, when I stopped worrying about my channel growing and I realized that I do it because I love to make the videos and I love to connect with you guys. And then, like, I started to get to know all of you guys and you got to know me. And we started interacting and I read your comments and I responded to your comments and I started doing you now live streams and the views and the subscribers didn't seem as important to me anymore. Don't get me wrong. I love it. Okay. I love every minute of it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to be a bullshit artist, but I do. But then it was like this amazing thing happened, right? And it was like truly this joke that started out of the wolf pack. It really became a thing. And so you guys make possible what is happening today. And I said to Katie, I said, you know, like, wouldn't it be amazing if on the school playground, everybody turned to the bully and said, listen, we're not going to take this anymore. So you can either join us or you can leave, but we're not going to take this anymore. And bullies rule out of fear. Okay. And the thing is... We ain't taking it no more. The, the, the wolf pack is like, no. And one of the things I love is that my comment sections are just flooded with love and positivity. I don't see that anywhere else on YouTube. Anywhere. I don't, I mean, I'm sorry. Like, other than, like, children's videos, I really do not see the love and compassion, the kindness. I mean, somebody can put in a comment section of mine, you know, like, my sister died tonight. And 30 people will respond and say, hey, like, hang in there. And people have become friends in the comment sections of my videos and contacted each other on Twitter and it's just the coolest shit to me and if right now I stopped growing and I never gained another subscriber I would be completely happy with where I'm at for that reason alone that we have all grown so close and thank you thank you for having my ass because if it wasn't for you I would never have had the courage to make the videos I've made the last couple days and feel so strongly in my heart of hearts that what I was doing was right and never questioned it and I haven't questioned it for one second and let me tell you what's so funny as I said this either in a live stream or I said it in my video the other day um, I said to Alex I think I said it in my video 
I said to Alex, I said, I, oh, I did it in my video and I was reading like the, t the text between us. And I said, he goes, what's going on, babe? And I said, that John guy's coming for me full force. And I said, but it's okay. I'm getting tons of support from the Wolf Pack. And he said, that's amazing. They love you. And then that night he said to me, he looked at me and he goes, you know what? He goes, those people have your back. And I was like, he's so right. Like, you know, why did I ever for once question that this was going to turn against me? You know, people know who I am. And you guys have made that happen. And it's all of us together. And we've created something very, very special here, I think. You know, and it's not me. It's not. Because... If you guys, you guys are in control of the comment sections, you guys are in control of the discussions, I don't go there, okay? So that's really yours in my videos. And I don't have comment moderators. You guys are really the living comment moderators. And so when I make the videos, I feel like in a way, I'm just kind of a voice for you guys, but it's really you. And I just think that's such cool shit, you know, like, YouTube has all these, like, tutorials for creators on, like, how to build viewership, how to build a brand. And I just think it's such phony bullshit. I'm sorry, YouTube, if you're watching, but I just do, okay? Be sincere, be genuine, be authentic, and be yourself. And, you know, like I said this in my video today, real recognizes real. And I've always just wanted to be the Roseanne on the couch that you guys would come home to at the end of the day. Let me be that. What is this car just sitting here on the side of the road for? I'm in like the middle of an emotional moment and this police officer is on the side of the road, so. I'm like, should I turn the light off? You guys allow that. You let me be who I need to be. You allow me to be that stupid character that just flops around my house and plays with my dogs and talks about whatever bullshit I bought at Costco. And and you like me for that, you know? You allow me into your homes. I can't tell you how many times I get Snapchats from people you know, or of people like sending me like Instagram pictures where they're watching my videos, like on the, excuse me, on the TV screens in their house. And they're like, you're in my living room. And I'm like, oh my God. I never thought it would ever be like that. You know, like I never started making videos with this assumption that it would ever turn into that. I just really didn't, you know? And so sometimes because I am so shy and awkward, I'm, I'm truly not how I am on video. Like, if you guys met me in person, you'd be like, oh my God, he's so night and day. I mean, I probably would be like, hey, how are you? You know, like that. But like, you would know that like, your immediate response would probably be, he is so shy. And, um, but then like, I, if it was like one of you, if it was like 10 of you, I'd be like a little, I'd be like, oh, why do they like me? You know, like that's always in my head. Why do they like me? I think it's, Do you ever get rid of that, you know, you wonder? Do you ever get rid of that? <clears throat> Do they like me? And why is it important? Is it important, you know? I read this. <clears throat> Did you ever read the book uh, Stargirl by Jerry Spinelli? I love it. And um, it's about this girl that... I can't remember what the main character's name is, but it's a boy. And <clears throat> he falls in love with Stargirl, and she's so fantastic. And... She, it's a middle grade book and they go to the school dance and she wears a uh, sunflower as a corsage and she like leads this limbo thing or I, you know one of those dun 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 you know one of those lines and she just doesn't care you know she's so fantastic and uh, I want to be that liberated soul that doesn't care and that's why, like, when people say to me, like, I don't give a shit what somebody thinks, I don't believe that. I just don't. I think we all care what somebody thinks. Maybe we don't care what everybody thinks, but we all care what somebody thinks. And I want you to know that when I make videos, I think very carefully about what you guys think. 
Because it's important for me that I don't disappoint you. And what I mean by that is, like, I don't watch what I say, like, every word, but it's important to me that we continue to put out positivity, that we handle situations with saying, this is not right, but we do it with a loving way. It was interesting at the end of my video today, I said that he's a very troubled soul and I feel sad for him. And that's true, I do. I have compassion in my heart for anybody that has that much anger and hatred. I, I, I truly do. Um, I've had resentment. I, I've had resentment in my heart. My resentment, my grudges turn to sadness, which I'm sure doesn't surprise you. And I think that it's a lot of times my expectations for people fall short and I get sad. And resentments are unfulfilled expectations. Resentments are when somebody doesn't act the way that we think they should act. And you know, but in the same way, if you've watched my videos and you've seen the tweets and the comments that he's put out, I've never truly related, I, can, I cannot relate to that rage, that anger. I've never felt it inside of my heart. And I can imagine that it is a huge burden. I've had friends of mine that have been, had that kind of rage. And I don't ever want to feel that. And I feel sorry for anybody that has that in their life. And I feel blessed that I don't have that kind of rage or anger, you know, in my heart. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to, that doesn't mean that I'm going to sit back, you know and continue to take somebody's mm, 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 mm. I dealt with that for my entire life growing up. That mm, 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 mm. And you know, like, enough already. All right? Nobody deserves to continue to take that time and 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 time again. We've all been the one that's not nice. Let's just be honest, okay? I, I gotta own my shit. There's been a few people out there that I haven't been real nice to in my life too, right? But I have the ability to go make amends to those people, and I have, because I have a 12-step program. So I feel blessed, because I've had to look at some of those people in their face and say, hey, listen, I was a real shit to you, and I need to take ownership for my behavior, and I need to allow you to tell me how it affected you, and I need to sit here and listen to that, and then I need to sh explain to you that that will never happen again, that I'm a changed person. And I need to display in my behavior that that ha will not continue and that you will trust that. I've had quite a few people that looked at me and said, then you know what, go fuck yourself. I don't want you in my life. And that was what I had to do. I had to get out of their life because you know what? They didn't want to ever see me again. I had an ex and I made amends to him at a funeral. A true story, a friend of ours uh, killed himself and I, I hadn't seen him in like three years, my ex. This was like a boyfriend from like when I was like 18 years old and I was really not nice to him. I was, it was in full on addiction. It was when I was hit by the van, I talked about that. I mean, he just dealt with some shit. I was not nice to him. Not I wasn't physically mean, but I was, I was verbally not very nice. <laughs> but. And I'm saying that in the nicest way I can. I was mean to him. I was very mean to him. And um, I saw him at this funeral. I guess it was longer than that. It probably was about... Because was, I was with my first boyfriend that I actually call a boyfriend. So it probably would about five or six years I had been sober. And I saw him at a funeral. And I knew that he, at the time he was living in Australia. And I knew I would never see him again. He still lives in Australia, I think. I don't know what he was actually doing home. Maybe he just lived at home at that time or something. But I knew I would never see him again. Anyway. And, uh... He left at the end of the service. And I, I ran outside after him. And I was like, hey, 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 I need to talk to you. And he kept on walking. And I, like, grabbed his arm. And he shook it off. And he said, get your hand off me. And I said, hey, listen. I said... You know, I real quick. I'm like, I've been sober for whatever time I've been. I said, I need to tell, I need to make amends to you. I need to take responsibility for my action. I was like bawling my eyes out. 
And he just looked at me and he goes, I have nothing to say to you. He goes, I don't want to hear what anything you have to say to me. He goes, it doesn't matter. He goes, you know, you're a disgusting human being. I said, please, just listen to what I have to say. And he goes, if it will make you feel better and make you never talk to me again, I will listen to what you have to say. And I said, okay. And he said, I... I took total ownership over my behavior. I cited several specific incidences that I had done, the harshest ones. I told him what I had learned and who I was as a person back then was not who I was today and that I would continue to change and be that. I said, did I leave anything out that you need to tell me? He shook his head. He looked at me with, with tears in his eyes. I will never forget this. And he said, you know, I loved you. And he said, and I believe that you're a different person today. He said, and I forgive you for that. He said, but then I'm going to ask you to do something for me. And I said, okay, what is it? And he said, I want you never to ever talk to me again. I want nothing to do with you. Because all you are is a reminder of bad times for me. And I said, okay. And he said, I wish you the best. I'm proud of you for being sober but don't ever talk to me again. And he turned and he walked away and I've never talked to him again. I've never reached out to him. I've looked him up on Facebook a couple times just to see if he's out there. <laughs> but I have to respect that, you know? It's not okay to hurt people. It's not okay to hurt people and not fix it. Our tongues have such power to affect true damage on people's souls. And I'm so glad that I am not that person that hurts people like that with my mouth anymore because I was. I could be ugly and evil and foul and I, I, I don't want to be that person anymore. It doesn't mean that I won't sit on a video and tell somebody my truth and what I really think. Because I am nobody's doormat today. And it has been a really, really strenuous exercise learning that there is a fine line between not being somebody's doormat and uh, not hurting them. And I can forgive John for that, you know, because he's young. He doesn't get it. And maybe someday he'll look back on this and he'll realize what he's done to people, you know? I hope so. I hope for him. I hope for him the growth that I've been allowed. I, I really do. I hope that for anybody out there. And, uh, you know, I really look at who I was a year ago. And this entire thing that's happened the last couple days is true evidence to me of how much I've learned in the last year from you guys. And, I mean, I really have, you know, like... You guys just build me up on a daily basis and you make me feel so wonderful. But I don't want to ever for one second forget where I came from. I don't for one second want to forget ever who I was. And that I could with such harshness hurt somebody, you know? And I haven't been that person in a very long time. I haven't, you know, I just don't go there. I, I learned to shut my mouth and not say anything. Um, I'm not going to say that I don't say mean things to people sometimes, but I really don't, you know? I've learned to be, uh, I've learned to respond and not be reactionary to people. It's why I don't delete videos. It's why I don't delete tweets. Because if I put it out there, I think it through. And I've put out some tweets in the last 24 hours that maybe I shouldn't have put out there. But you know what? Fuck it. I ain't nobody's joke. Okay? I'm not. And if you're going to try to make a joke of who I am in my life and my marriage, then get ready. Because I also am inspired by strong characters in movies, like people that were real as well, though, like Norma Ray and Aaron Brockovich, you know, and uh, Hilary Swank in Boys Don't Cry, what was her name in that movie, and, uh, you know, all of these people that were such strong characters, now, I will never forget, you know, Norma Ray holding that sign, or... Sandra Bullock in The Blind Side. Or 
Julia Roberts and Aaron Brockovich, you know, when she looks at that attorney and she says, how much is your uterus worth? Is that cruel? Is that bullying to hold somebody accountable like that? Or is that saying enough is enough is enough? No more. And that to me is inspiring. And that's what I love. And that's why I love movies. And that's what I try to be on my channel. I try to tell my truth and own my truth and be honest about it. Can't take away my truth, it is what it is. I'm not always proud of it. I'm not always proud of my behaviors that I've had in the past. I'm not always proud of my behaviors that I've had in the present, but I am what I am, you know? So, man, I have rambled for almost a half an hour and I said I was gonna make a short stream. I cried, I laughed. It's been a day. That's pretty much a typical day in my life. <laughs> I cry, I laugh, I eat some junk food. I'm getting ready to go do that before I go home. I need to have a piece of cheese or something. I'm hungry. And uh, yeah, so listen to a little bit of my audiobook as I drive home. I'm way out in the country right now. Anyway, I'm on this road called Little Chicago Road. <laughs> it's, and then it turns in, this road down here turns into called Moon Town. <laughs> oh, God. So tomorrow, Peterism starts. Don't forget. I'm really excited about it. I posted a video today on Peterisms. It's now Peterisms. It's no longer my so-called healthy life. And I posted it on there today. And it was called, It's Time to Say Goodbye, for me to say goodbye. And, oh, it's so emotional. I bawled my eyes out. I bawled my eyes out. I already talked about this already. But I looked, I watched it back, and I was like, you know what? This is like one of my favorite videos I've ever made. It just was so fucking honest. And I loved it, you know? I was like, I didn't hold back, not one second. And that's, that's for me, I've come, like, this vlog has allowed that. This vlog has allowed me to completely just bleh, vomit myself and be myself. And I wish that for everybody out there. I wish you guys all... Let's just be ourselves from now on. If people love us, they love us. And they hate us, they hate us. But let's just be ourselves. You know? So, thank you for letting me be that. Letting me cry and laugh and tell stories and all of it. Just thank you. I love you guys. And I'll see you tomorrow, December 1st.